Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor at Central United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. Each Sunday morning, we have our message notes that you can fill in the spaces provided uh, or write in the margins, whatever is helpful for you. There's five days of devotional uh, material there, Monday through Friday, to help you further uh, unpack the scripture and the message that is based on that scripture. We just started a series of uh, messages on uh, I Heart Me or I Love Me, uh, and the, this is the source of, of that uh, series of messages. It's uh, by David Hamilton, PhD in uh, chemistry, uh, specializing in neural uh, neuroscience, and uh, the uh, subtitle of the book is The Science of Self-Love. So we are in the midst of this series of messages on self-love. This uh, came from a thought that I had that, uh, you know, Jesus said we should love others as we love ourselves. But what if this challenge of that, uh, of that process is the actually loving of ourselves? And so I wanted to uh, sort of see what uh, David Hamilton's book uh, could uh, teach uh, me and, uh, and how I might relate it to scripture and uh, pass that on to you as uh, something that uh, we, something we all would find helpful in terms of loving ourselves better so that we might love others. So I'd like to read one of the scriptures from this past Sunday, Psalm 8. It's one of my favorites, uh, and I'm reading it from the New Revised Standard Version. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have found a, a bolt work because of your foals to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the work of your hands and you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. May God add a blessing in a, uh, to the reading and hearing of that holy word. So I want us to think about this. Jesus uh, was one who taught us to love others, and we are created to be in relationship with others. Uh, we are actually, according to, to what David Hamilton says, we are actually wired by our DNA to desire connections with others. And so Hamilton, in his book, he offers this really lengthy uh, uh, explanation. But basically, uh, this is the result of, of a gene estimated to be 500 million years old. I see in my devotions, I have 5,000 million years old. That's a typo. Uh, but but that gene produces oxytocin in our blood and that protects, oxytocin protects our heart and our cardiovascular system. So it makes sense that people who had that gene over uh, millions of years of evolution, uh, we came to be who we are with this, uh, with this gene that produces oxytocin, which protects our hearts. Uh, you know, so through the survival of the fittest and the mutations, we have, uh, we have this gene which protects our hearts. And, uh, and, and the people who are uh, able to pass that gene on are people who are interested in being in relationship with others. And so it just kept uh, you know, procreating until we got to the point where we all have this gene and this part of our genetic makeup that we want to be uh, in relationship with each other. It makes us happier. Oxytocin makes us healthier. Uh, more able to sustain ourselves in relationships. So Psalm 8 tells us that we are made just a little lower than God. And we are the crowning part of that, of that creation. One of the things that we celebrate as followers of Christ is the triune um, uh, nature of God, the Trinity, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we like to say in our church, a creator, redeemer, sustainer. And God allows us to be in community because God, or God, God inspires us, I should say, uh, to, to be in community because God, uh, God is community. God is a community of the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. There are wonderful pictures um, 
uh, from um, as long ago as the Middle Ages of, of God as three around a table together. Uh, I think they call it a paraclete. And that, that is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with Christ the Redeemer and with God the Creator. So it's really a, a great idea for us that God in God's self is community. And so we, made in God's image, are also uh, meant to be in community with one another. So I want you to think about that <clears throat> and what it means. And how do you live out your desire to be in community? What does this mean to you? What's the significance of, of being made this way in God's image that we are created for community? I want you to think about that today and think about the marvelous way in which God has created us and how we are the crowning part of God's uh, creation made in God's image. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for this time together. We ask that your blessing be upon us this week. We ask that your peace be all around us. And as we give ourselves into your love and care, may we be mindful that we are also given into the love and care of others. We ask that your grace be with us. We ask that your peace be with us. We ask that uh, your direction be upon us, that as we seek to be the people that you created us to be, that we can be um, the best that you've created us to be for each other as well. May it ever be so in the name of Christ our Lord and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, friends, have a blessed Tuesday. See you tomorrow.